Hi, I want to do a quick introduction uh, for the third sculpture. It's, I think it's, I got it all mixed up. It's the second sculpture, but you've actually done three for the class, including your uh, self-portrait sculpture and then the big sculpture for the public uh, art piece, and now your final one for the uh, semester. This is, uh, I, I'm not so concerned about the scale of this one. I want you to build it with the resources you have. I never want you to spend a lot of money, although I will encourage you to think about um, anything that you do in any class, especially any creative class, that you're thinking about your portfolio. So I say this because if you just want to do something half-ass, that's fine, but then I wouldn't put that in your portfolio. And my thought is, why waste the time and energy if you're not going to create something that you can put on your resume and in your portfolio to show the work that you do and the talent that you have and the skills that you possess and blah, blah, blah. So, um, so it's up to you what, how much money you want to spend on it and resources. Like I said, I would try to spend zero money on it and use whatever you have around you. So this is uh, the requirements on this sculpture is that you are going to um, create a, a sculpture which is a freestanding piece of work that you uh, expect to be seen from all different sides or can be. And uh, which doesn't mean it can't have a front or a back, but it's just it's a freestanding piece, three dimensional. And uh, I I want it outdoors. This is the important part to me that it's outdoors, and I want it created where you're going to place it in your environment, where wherever you live, or wherever you want, for that matter. It needs to stay outside, permanently placed for ten days. Now, one of the things I wanted to do is uh, give a nod to Christo, the artist that died. Uh, actually yesterday at the time I'm making this so it was um, May 31st <clears throat> Christo is an artist that we've uh, looked at a little bit uh, in this class him and his wife did outdoor large-scale installation work and I always like using Christo because it kind of forces you to think about what is art and what's the value of art and what's the purpose um, he really pushes the boundaries on this and He's spent his entire life and spent millions and millions of dollars creating art and probably has made just as much because he self-financed all his own work. So he had to make that much at some point. Uh, one example of a work that he did was uh, there was a castle in Germany uh, that he literally just covered with canvas, white canvas. And you can go to his uh, website and see images. He does a real nice job of documenting all this. Uh, but... It took him 25 years to get everything worked out and eventually get this castle wrapped. And, uh, and they have all the dimensions and amount of uh, materials used, rope, how many people, the cost. It was a couple million dollars to do this. And they, they put a tarp over this entire castle in Germany. And part of Christo is his deal is it's, it's as much the process uh, as it is the finished product and especially since their installation he expects people to interact and walk in in his creations and and so 25 years to, in different regimes like when he first started it was a communist state and then it became a democracy uh, during the process and so he was uh, negotiating with completely di a completely different government uh, towards the end and eventually he got the okay and got it all arranged to do this and he left it up for 10 days 25 years multiple millions of dollars to create this project and he left it up for 10 days which is perfect because it fits his thinking around his his art and um, I think the simplest way that I would explain his art just as an aside is that if you look at some of the pictures and the thousands of people that turned out to see this monstrosity, this castle wrapped. Like, why would anyone wrap a castle in sheets or tarps or whatever it is? doesn't matter. In cloth. But is, is what I would ask you to consider is, will you ever do anything in your life that will inspire, encourage, push people out to come together and be a community because of something you created? I think he used the number of a hundred thousand people over the span of the of the whole piece, and if you ever do anything that will 
inspire 100,000 people to get out and talk about something that you created, then I would say that's success. Whether you understand the art or like it or appreciate it or would want to buy it or put it on your wall, it doesn't matter. It was about the process and the experience and the result of people interacting with something that he created was his art. So anyway, with all that said, your sculpture is something that has to be able to stay outdoors for 10 days. Now, if you make it out of paper and it's going to rain in the next three days after you get it done, that's probably not going to be a good idea. So maybe you'll have to put some kind of coating on it or use some kind of different material or put it someplace where it's rain's not going to hit it directly or next to a sprinkler in a flower bed or a garden. You got to think about all these things and that's the point of it. Create something that can live outside for at least 10 days. The other thing that you have to really consider, which I talk a lot about, is considering all the different aspects. So that's uh, how to secure it down, the base, um, how to make it safe so it doesn't hurt anyone. Uh, if you want to make it out of food items, how are you going to keep animals from dragging it off? Or is it okay if a dog walks by and pees on it? Or a squirrel nibbles on it? Um, these are all factors that you have to think about. And then, of course, we've already done the dialogue, uh, the exercise on dialogue and thought about that. So what does the piece say? Does it live well there? So you're going to create this piece. And the one thing different, um, so you can create a maquette if you want, but more than likely I would just create the piece and be comfortable with it. might not be exactly what you're thinking or imagining or figuring out as you go along. That's okay. Uh, but the piece, the extra piece to this project is you're going to do a fully developed proposal. And on the digital workbook, the workbook that I have, uh, I've given links to, and when I write this up, I'll give you a link again to that workbook. On page 63 is an example of the degree of depth nuances, detail that I want in your proposal. And I will be grading accordingly. So you need to have pictures of the piece, of the site, the piece in the site. You need to show me uh, thinking, building up to it, the cost of it, uh, dimensions, uh, sketches of what you're imagining in the development process, uh, a statement about it, um, supplies, everything. I want a, a proposal as if you were going to someone and saying, I'd like to create this for this site. Uh, will you commission it? Will you pay me for it? Will you just let me put it there? You know, sometimes uh, we feel lucky just to be able to place art in places and we would do it for free, which there's nothing, absolutely nothing wrong with that. So the work of art, it placed images of that and a proposal that captures the whole process. This is your final project. It's your final uh, sculpture. And um, I wanted to just say a few words about it. And then I will also write it up so that you know what I'm talking about. So anyway, I look forward to seeing your work. And I'll be anxious. Uh, one last thing I will say with all this is that, so uh, one of the other things you have to consider, if you live at home with your parents, you probably have to get permission from them or find a spot that works for them. If you have a dog in the backyard, you'll have to think about it. What if you live in an apartment? Well, maybe it'll have to be on your back patio, or maybe there's a, some space that you think won't be touched. You know, sometimes uh, creating art, there's art, professional artists that create temporary work. So they might put something in the woods or in the creek or something. But if it doesn't last 10 days, then it doesn't get the grade. So you need to make sure and consider that and make something at least permanent enough to last 10 days. Okay, guys, uh, so far so good on everything. I look forward to seeing this final project. We'll, uh, I'll see you online.